So you're ditching cow's milk for whatever reason, and you're looking for the tastiest alternative for your morning latte. But alternative milks are really difficult to steam properly. So how do you get that creamy texture, and maybe even pour some latte art with alternative milks? That's what this video will show you. In this video, I will be referencing a few techniques that I talked about in my milk steaming video, which you can check out in the description below. Just as with cow's milk, it is super important to get a good vortex going, as all the alternative milks that I tested didn't incorporate air as well as cow's milk. So let's line them up. First of all, we have the oldest go-to for lactose intolerant and vegans, it's soy milk. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of soy milk. I don't particularly like the texture or the flavor, but I know it's really popular with a lot of people in cafes and those who are lactose intolerant. When I had friends over in the past who I knew didn't drink cow's milk, I would buy some soy milk because they would usually prefer it in a latte. I had a lot of trouble steaming it at first, but I learned some really fantastic tips on how to make soy milk much better for lattes. First thing before you even pour that soy milk into your jug, you need to use darker roasted coffee beans with low acidity. Soy milk has the highest protein content of any of the alternative milks that I tested, and proteins react really poorly with highly acidic coffee. So save your lightly roasted Ethiopian beans for another day and use darker roasted coffee to avoid having that soy milk separate once it hits the espresso. There is nothing more gross than seeing your soy latte clump together and start to look more like a Monet painting than latte art. It all starts with the coffee beans before you even steam that soy milk in the jug. Next, you definitely want to reduce the amount of heat you put into soy milk. Soy milk can't handle as high a temperature as cow's milk can, so if you're steaming and you're using a thermometer to check the temperature, try to end up at around 55 degrees C, otherwise you'll end up with curdled soy milk, which is super gross. Yes, I know, it won't be as hot a drink, but it's much better than having soy milk coffee pudding. You also need to reduce the amount of air you put into soy milk. It can't handle as much air as cow's milk, so it'll end up much more more foamy much faster. So reduce the amount of air at the beginning and get that vortex going. To help with this, take the soy milk straight from the fridge and steam adding air while it's still cold because it will incorporate the air much better. The brand of soy milk you use is also very important for coffee. I've noticed that some of the speciality cafes in Tokyo use bon soy, which has some stabilizers in it that make it much better for coffee. Like I said, I rarely use any soy milk, so if you have a favorite brand that works really well for coffee, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Next up we have almond milk, which used to be one of my favorites for lattes. The flavor is really mild and pleasant, and it doesn't override the flavor of the espresso. It's also very widely available, even here in Japan, where you can buy it for a little bit more than cow's milk. Now, almond milk isn't as easy to steam as cow's milk. If you can find it, barista blends are much better for this, as they have some stabilizers in them that allow the milk to hold latte art for a little bit longer without turning into a bubbling mess. Almond milk can also handle temperature much better than soy milk can, so you can treat it as you would with cow's milk and heat to a little bit higher temperature. The biggest issue I found with almond milk is that it pulls in air and creates those big bubbles very easily, so I generally inject a lot less air at the start of steaming. It's also difficult to do thicker foam with almond milk, and I generally avoid things like cappuccinos and go for something like a flat white or a latte. If you get too much foam on there, it tends to separate and it ends up looking a little bit like a bubble bath with very bad texture. Next up is my absolute favorite alternative milk, which is oat milk. Oat milk is naturally a little bit sweeter than soy or almond milk, but it still has a mild flavor so you can taste the coffee. So I've tried making oat milk myself at home and had some really great successes with it, but oats are naturally very starchy. So if you want to avoid having porridge lattes, I highly recommend looking for barista blend oat milks. I really only made my own oat milk because it was kind of hard to find some in Tokyo even a few years ago, but now they have a few brands available, so I've kind of stopped making my own. Unlike soy milk, oat milk doesn't have very much protein content, so it's not likely to curdle like it might do with soy milk. However, this does mean that it's easy to take on bigger bubbles, and it can be a lot harder to do latte art if you're not using a barista blend. It can be a little challenging to get the right texture with oat milk, so reduce the air you inject early on, and avoid those short bursts that pull a lot of air in because it'd be very difficult to incorporate those later on. So those are the three main alternative milks used for coffee, but what about some of the other alternatives that don't get as much attention? 
In my experience, while I do like an ice cold glass of rice milk, it's a little bit too sweet and overpowers the flavor of coffee. It's also a little bit too watery and it's basically impossible to do any latte art with it. How about hemp milk? No, just, just no. Hemp milk just creates a muddy, horrible texture when combined with coffee. I would just avoid it at all costs. I'm open to being wrong on that and it might just be personal taste, but the one time I did try hemp milk with coffee, I literally couldn't finish the drink. I've also tried cashew nut milk and it has such a distinctive flavor that it overpowers the coffee a little bit too much. It also doesn't steam particularly well and the first time I tried it, it fell apart completely when it hit the espresso. If a company out there makes a good cashew nut barista blend in the future, I'd love to try it, but for now I'd much prefer something like almond milk when it comes to the nut milks. I also tried this hazelnut milk, which tasted amazing, but then I found out later that it was actually just rice milk with hazelnut paste and it was terrible to steam. I'm not the biggest fan of coconut milk, but I did try steaming it for a latte in this video. The flavor is a little dull and I did find that when combined with espresso, it made a pretty plain tasting drink, even though it did have a really nice creamy texture. If you love coconut everything, then you might want to try this one. The texture is really smooth, but for me it all comes down to flavor, so coconut milk for me is... I also tried pistachio milk, which tasted great, but it was way too expensive to do it more than once or twice, and I'm not planning on doing that very often. I do want to make a video coming up about how I make a pistachio cream latte, which is absolutely amazing. So if you want to see that, you should subscribe. So there's how to steam alternatives to cow's milk and a few that I avoid. I used whatever alternative milk brands were available here in Japan, but if you have a favorite one that I didn't include, please let me know in the comments below so I can check it out. I also started a Discord channel to help with all of the questions that I've been getting in the comment section here in YouTube. On Discord, you can post pictures and videos so I can help diagnose your espresso and latte art problems. So if you want to join that group, please check the link in the description below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. I really only ate... Ugh, I really only ate... Ugh. There's nothing more gross than seeing your latte... Nah, soy latte. <laughs> You also need to reduce the amount of air you put into soy's milk. Soy's milk? That doesn't, that's not a thing. The texture of hemp milk is awful for steaming and it just makes it taste really muddy and gross and disgusting. Ugh, oh God, I can't even, it's disgusting, ugh. A lot less air at the beginning to incorporate something with the bubbles and stuff.